of walls and bricks, apartment complexes in Potsdam. With the recent development of security complexes for students, the mentality of separation has been privatized. This video attempts to demonstrate this as laid out by Lindsay Brenner in an article Bound in Spaces. This concept is fortified due to the ever-constant existence of the so-called other. The other in this case being those deemed foreign to the situational civilized society. The separation of the other was maintained by means of a physical barrier, a wall of any nature, physical or metaphorical. A barrier has always existed in classical cities as an attempt to keep at bay the other. The main response to this separation was a sense of terror and thus citizens projected their fears onto the other. In the modern era, the barriers changed but the principle of terror remained. This separation has created a strong sense of inequality both in race and class. The sense of large-scale separation no longer applies and in suburbia we see as a result the emphasis on micro-separation. And thus we see walls and barriers being built on a small scale making the other everyone on the outside. This making every man the king of his own castle in a sense. This constant need for effective security sees the development of various methods to maintain the barrier. The first being barriers of concrete, brick and steel. These structures have increased in size and shape to accommodate the occupants within. The emphasis on the size, however, creates a public display of wealth. The display of wealth amplifies the difference between the occupant and the other, forming a notion between superior and inferior. Walls and barriers are not the only way to instill a separation. Signs that adorn walls provide a means to inform the outsider that they are not welcome within without permission. They inform of the dangers of crossing the barrier. Signs also provide amnesty for the occupants to act with force should the other trespass within the barrier. Force acted out by security companies and recorded by surveillance for legal prosecution later. A more primal approach to security is also used as a second barrier. Ironically, the barrier protects the other from the primal. The primal either in the form of instilling fear on the other, or as a warning mechanism of his presence. Restricted access is enforced by various means. In the form of burglar-proofed windows and doors, ships of spikes on top of walls. Mass-produced palisade fencing is also used as a cheaper alternative to concrete walls. Razor wire serves the purpose of shredding skin. With electric fencing as a shocking non-lethal alternative or addition. 
These barrels are often adorned and furnished to make them more aesthetically pleasing to the occupants. The domain of the occupant and the domain of the other can be seen as that which is clean and maintained. compared to the air which is wild and unkept. That division sees multiple degrees with people separating themselves from one another via smaller barriers. New and modern complexes are being developed rapidly for the emerging market of students. These concepts are drafted, implemented, marketed and advertised. By various estate agents across Rochester. These estates and agents add a human element in the form of armed guards, forming a mobile safety and form of protection for the property and its occupants by ironically employing the other as the protector, which is thus the third form of protection. In conclusion, these barriers were created as a substitute for generalized separation. They were fueled by a sense of fear of the uncontrolled urban environment. These measures were privatized and commercialized, leading to expanding market of safety for sale.